Hi, this is Stella. Welcome back to my channel. I share insider tips about getting your U.S. work visas, building a successful career in the creative industry, and I tell uncensored stories about corporate America. If you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to subscribe and hit the notification bell button below so I can keep feeding you insider secrets for free. Previously, I talked about some amazing hidden corporate benefits that many people don't know about. In this video, I'm going to expose the dark sides of working for big corporations, you know, just to even things out. First and foremost, things happen very slowly at big companies. When I said slow, I mean painfully slow. A simple process that takes weeks to implement in a smaller company can often take up to years to happen in a big company. It's not that the same process suddenly becomes more difficult at a big company. It's simply because there are layers and layers of approval required for any given project. Once I was waiting for 72 people to approve on a video, do you know how difficult it is to get 72 people to agree on the same thing? Imagine you're at Thanksgiving dinner table with your relatives and you were discussing politics, bad idea, and you were trying to get them to agree on the same issue. It's more like mission impossible. It's not that big companies are stupid and they don't realize how painful and unproductive it is to have layers and layers of control, but it's unfortunate that it's necessary in order to protect the company against possible litigation and pre premature business decisions. If you like to be up to date with technology, again, it's probably not the best idea to work for a big company because they are usually three to five years behind in technology solutions and equipment. For example, a lot of big companies are still relying on Internet Explorer a browser that Microsoft itself had stopped supporting and developing years ago. Ever wonder why some big companies have websites that look like they were developed 20 years ago? Because they literally were. It's not like they were not looking to change up the design, but there are so many layers of approvals and intricate details that need to be taken care of before that can happen. And by the time they complete the process, they are again three to five years behind. When it comes to hiring, big companies again move at the speed of a snail. If you're trying to get hired at a big company, don't expect to hear back anytime soon. From the time you start your initial interview process to the time when they decide to extend you an offer, it usually takes about six months. Of course, there are exceptions. For example, I myself was hired merely three weeks after my initial interview at one of the big companies I used to work for it usually depends on how urgent their hiring need is and how you frame your availability. For example, I always mention that I'm nearing the end of the process with a couple of other companies and I have to make a decision within two weeks. And then I casually throw in a few names of their competitors just to gently remind them that if they don't act fast, I might be snatched up by one of their enemies. It works like a charm every time. When you run into tech issues, you normally call somebody up in tech support and they'll help you out. When you do this at big companies, however, instead of asking for your name, they ask for your employee ID number. There are so many people in these companies with the same name, your name isn't even relevant when they're trying to confirm your identity. Now, you may have heard of the term getting treated like a number when people complain about corporate culture. In big companies, it's not even a figure of speech. You are quite literally being treated like a number for practical reasons. Even though it's true for most companies, your job is even more replaceable at big companies because one, they have a large pool of candidates. People are always trying to get into these big corporations. They will never run out of options. And two, because they can afford to hire more people, a lot of the roles they hire have repetitive functions. So once you're gone, they can always rely on somebody else to do your job. It's not necessarily true at smaller companies when you are being relied on heavily on what you do and you are not as easily replaceable. Every company has office politics. However, in some big companies, they take it to the next level. It can be as ugly and as dramatic as you see them on TV shows. For example, in one of my old jobs, someone wrongly accused another colleague 
of doing something that they did not do just so they can get them fired and prevent them from becoming their boss. Now, to prevent a proper internal investigation, they also pulled some strings from the HR department so that nothing was ever properly done and the whole incident went away as if it never happened. At one of my old jobs, there are constantly protesters stationed outside of the building because the company finances controversial projects that these activists campaign against. It can be quite shocking the first time when you see these people out there and you didn't realize or even know about the projects they're talking about. Obviously, company leadership have evaluated these projects financially and strategically and decided it makes sense. And unless you're in the C-suite, you probably have no say in it. If you hold views against what your company is doing, you're probably going to feel conflicted and not proud of working there. Big companies exercise tighter control on employees' outside activities. Most of the time, it's for good reasons because they need to make sure that whatever employees are doing outside of the job doesn't negatively impact the company's image. It's even more true for publicly traded companies because their stock value is highly sensitive to incidents and events of all nature. Unfortunately for individual employees, it means that you have to abide by a certain level of restrictions. And for a lot of people, this might or might not be okay. For example, if you get invited to be a speaker at a conference, instead of just saying okay because you would like to, you have to submit a form and your whole presentation to the company's compliance teams for their review before you can even accept the invitation. Top performers at smaller companies can get promoted pretty quickly because these companies are more agile and they respond to changes quickly. In big companies, however, you need to plan your promotion strategically way ahead of schedule because there's usually a cutoff time for promotion nominations and if you miss the first one, you need to wait at least another year for the next one. And it can take years for you to get to the next level. For example, if you want to be considered for promotion next year, don't talk to your boss in November. That's already too late. Even if your boss wants to help you, his or her hands are tied. Talk to your boss in the summer and you might be considered for a title change or salary increase next year. And that's a wrap for the ugly side of working for big corporations. Did I miss anything? What do you hate the most about big corporations? Please comment down below. Stay tuned until next time for more videos.